Hi everyone, it's uh, Mr. Eusebio here. I'm doing a quick video to show you, to review some of the quick points in what we've been covering in class. I realize now that it's gonna be very difficult to teach you how to use the camera because that, for one, we don't have enough available and secondly, you know, distractions happen. And so when I do my demos, sometimes things don't always run well. So what I'm gonna talk to you about is that there's a few cameras that you're going to have at your disposal to use in yearbook for, for right now. Uh, this one is called the Nikon D40X. Now we have two versions of this. We have a D40X and a D40. The only difference between the two is that one has less megapixels than the other. But as far as the menus go with the actual camera, they actually function both the same. Another camera that we have available is the Nikon D50. Now the Nikon D50 is a little bit older as a camera, but it still functions very well. And there's a couple of features that make this a great camera just to use. It's more responsive, and it also has a top LCD screen. The top LCD screen allows you to see information very quickly and allows you to change the settings. To go over a few points that I want you to learn about, what is shutter speed? Shutter speed is the ability to freeze action or blur action, really. That's all it really is. So, for example, the bigger example that I'm usually giving is when you're inside the gym, at, in the auditorium, somewhere where it's really dark, you're gonna need a decent shutter speed in order to capture the action. We went over some samples in class. I had either students jumping or running, and it illustrated that when we used a slower shutter speed, we had motion blur. And you needed to be at a shutter speed of at least one five hundredth of a second to freeze real action. In most cases, you don't need one five hundredth of a second. If you're taking photos with a friend, you don't need it. You can go to one one hundredth of a second. And then you're gonna, you might ask, well, why is that important, Mr. Eusebio? How does that influence what I'm doing with my camera? If you recall, I talked about the ISO, which is the, um, which is the sensitivity of the camera to light. Cameras have a range of ISO, so depending on the age of the camera and the model, you may be able to increase the ISO more than others. Where would you need higher ISOs? You would need a higher ISO if you're working in a dark environment you're gonna need to push that value up in order to get more light into the camera. But there's a trade-off. If you increase the ISO, what will happen very quickly, the, the actual images in the camera will become noisier. In other words, not sound, but there's gonna be more grain in it, in the actual images as we increase the ISO. And this camera, the Nikon D40X, the D50 that we have, the D40, have a max native ISO of 1600, meaning that's as far as you really want to go with that camera. If you go beyond that, the noise and grain in the image will be too much for that camera to handle and we won't get a good image. The next thing I wanted to talk to all of you about is depth of field. I don't think the concept really ran home with all of you the other day, so I'm gonna try and explain it with examples. I went over and showed you what an F number means, an F stop number. It has to do with the opening of the iris of the actual lens. If you can think about it, your eyes have an iris and it opens up and closes depending if it's too bright or it's too dark. If you walk into a dark room, your iris will actually open up, your pupils will dilate. And it's a very interesting thing to see. If you go into a dark room, your pupils will dilate. But as soon as you step outside, your pupils will shrink. And it's a very interesting thing to see because cameras are not organic, but they work very similar, okay? And so that's why when I was illustrating this concept earlier in class, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but right now this lens, which is a prime lens, is set a small aperture value. I'm gonna tell you right now, aperture value is very confusing because the terminology, for some reason, the way it's set up, 
the larger the f-stop number, and hopefully it shows up in the screen somewhere, the larger the f-stop number, the more depth of field you're gonna see in your image, okay? In other words, you'll get more in focus with a, um, a smaller, uh, smaller f-number. But if you open up the iris of the lens, meaning the f-stop, the aperture is getting larger, as a consequence, the f-stop number decreases, okay? Just in terminology, you'll notice that the aperture begins to open up. And as it opens up, it allows the camera to pull in more light into the camera's sensor. By doing that, you're able to shoot in darker environments. But there's a natural trade-off by being able to increase the aperture value. When you increase the aperture value, you're able to control the depth of field a lot better. You'll notice that there's photos where the background is completely blurred out. And that's done either using long telephoto lenses or prime lenses like these, which create that nice, subtle, shallow depth of field. Two terms. Shallow means there's very little in focus. Think of a pond that's shallow, meaning the water is not very deep. But something with a deep, you know, waterbed means that water is very deep down to the ground. But something that's shallow, it's, it's very only on the surface. So when you use, for example, an f-stop number of like f1.8, you're using a very shallow depth of field. Meaning if you took my photo right now, and as you can tell, the background is blown out because the camera is set to an aperture value of f2.0. It is a small f number, but a large aperture value. Meaning the iris of the lens on the camera that I'm filming with is actually opened up quite a lot. And because of that, the background behind me is blurred out. I know the concept may still not make sense and it's gonna be challenging to understand in particular with lenses like these. Unfortunately, with zoom lenses, the aperture values are fairly, um, the apertures don't open up very much. And so you can't get a lot of light in these types of lenses. And that's something I'll discuss further with you. So aperture value controls the amount that's in depth. It, it does two things. It allows more light to come into the camera or less light depending on how much you open up the aperture, depending on how much you open it, okay? If you don't open it very much, you get less light. You open it more, you get more light. But because you open it more, you blur the background out even more, okay? It's still hard to understand. You'll get a better idea when you actually start producing photos yourself, and we can talk about that more.